As many of you may or may not know, I'm quite fond of speedrunning Little Big Planet, the first game in the series. And today I'll be attempting a challenge that pushes Sackboy's abilities to its limits by trying to answer the question, can you beat Little Big Planet without grabbing? For those not familiar, Little Big Planet is a physics-based platformer where the main protagonist Sackboy has a rather limited moveset. While playing as him, we can run, jump, grab objects, and that's about it. Most of the game's obstacles are entirely built around these few things, so it will certainly be a challenge to overcome everything the game has to throw at us. Here are the rules of the challenge. We must complete the final level of the game, The Collector, through whatever means possible. The only restriction is that we cannot grab anything. Use of the R1 button is allowed, as sometimes it can be useful for things other than grabbing. We also won't be using the Overlord exploit, which allows us to finish any level straight away. That would be quite boring. But we do have access to all of the movement tricks that Sackboy has to offer. However, I'll try not to use these unless they're absolutely required. But I'll just explain a few briefly now as we're likely to need them. A left corner jump, or LCJ for short, is a quick and easy way to get an extremely high jump just by standing in a separate layer to a left corner and timing a jump as you go past it. A right corner jump, or RCJ for short, is another way we can get a lot more jump height, but not nearly as much as an LCJ. By positioning Sackboy on the very right of a corner, we can run off and then quickly jump to get a bit more height. The last trick I'll mention are called bounce jumps. These are just variations of RCJs. Approaching a right corner at an angle with any kind of speed allows us to get an extremely exaggerated jump when we land onto it. Now that that's all explained, I'll be going through all 26 levels of the main story mode, discussing each challenge as we face them, and only briefly mentioning the easy stuff. With everything out of the way, let's jump right into the first level, Introduction. First off, Introduction doesn't even have anything that the player can grab, so we can just walk right on through. The following level, First Steps, has the first actual grabbable materials, but like Introduction, we can just walk straight through without any issues. The next level, Get a Grip, is meant to be the point in the game that we learn about the grabbing mechanic, but surprisingly, this one isn't too much of a challenge either. The first section of the level has us pushing around some blocks, but if we just take our time, then we can easily push them without grabbing at all. Everything here can be pushed around easily, but up ahead is the most challenging part of the level. We're normally required to grab and swing off these sponges to reach up to the castle section. The only way out for us is to walk on top of them instead. By getting a lucky jump off of this wall or doing an LCJ here, we can make it up on top of the sponges to do some tricky platforming up to the checkpoint. Once we climb the seesaws, we can push over this block to make it up to the queen. For the rest of the level, we're home free. All we have to do is ride the horse straight to the scoreboard. I think it's time we put a costume on now that we're up to the final level of the gardens. Skate to victory and... Oh. Oh no. This bird only goes upwards once it gets grabbed, and unfortunately it's the only way to progress beyond this point. So I think I can safely answer the question, is it possible to beat Little Big Planet without grabbing? No. But I'm not letting this bird stop me. We're going to be asking a different question now. How many grabs does it take to beat Little Big Planet? With our single grab added to the counter, we're able to finish the rest of the level with only a few extra challenges. Now there is a way to completely fly over the entire level like a speedrunning cheetah, but we're going to ignore this. Mostly because we wouldn't actually be able to do this trick since we need to have online unlocked. And that only happens until after this level, so we'll be doing it the hard way. Some tricky jumps can be made to skip the windmills. You'll have to try and get the second one to fling you upwards. This bird goes up and down on its own, so we can get a jump on top of it and ride it up to the queen. For this next part, instead of using the weights to infiltrate the castle, we're able to just hop inside the box and push it downwards with our body. Once we've made our way through the castle, we need to get a good launch off of this boot. If you jump when it kicks forward, you can land on top of the next sponge to push down the bridge without crabbing. After this, just ride the skateboard down and make your way to the savannah. We're going to be starting off swinging safari with a trick that lets us clip through the submarine to make it all the way up to the top of the stage. From here we can do an RCJ, then to make it over the next wall there's a hard jump you can do by cramming yourself into this corner. With a bit of skill and a lot of luck, you'll have skipped the first half of the level without a single grab. At the next set of two monkeys, they can both be skipped by doing an LCJ off of the first one to climb over them. Thanks to Real for recording this clip, I was never able to do it. Then at the end of the buffalo section, another LCJ can be done to skip the monkey. Here is the only required grab of the level. 
Swing back and forth off of this monkey to make it onto the sponge of the second. From here, jump off and run to the scoreboard with only one grab. Most of the first half of Burning Forest is easy, as you can just jump past this monkey. Once you reach the hill during the buffalo auto-scroller, you can time a jump to land on the croc's mouth to make it up before it eats the buffalo. This grab and swing section can be skipped entirely by landing in the jaws of the first croc's mouth to have it fling you over the entire thing. Walk through the rest of the level as normal, and be careful at the big drops. Finally, the last swinging section can be skipped by jumping onto a croc to get launched, or by carefully jumping across the sponges after doing an RCJ. Head to the scoreboard with zero grabs. All of the Meerkat Kingdom is pretty straightforward since you are able to push Striper Tail with your body. There is a couple of speedrunning tricks that skips the whole level, but either way, this level can be done in zero grabs. The wedding reception is just about as easy as first steps was. We can easily walk through the whole thing without any issues. The first half of the darkness doesn't require any grabbing. This skull and the one that follows cannot be skipped. And even though we can't move this sponge, we can still clear this gap anyway by doing a very hard jump. The three moving skulls can be jumped across by starting with an RCJ, and Don Lu can be pushed the entire distance. Make your way to the elevators, and complete the darkness in only two grabs. Hold right and jump at the right times to make it through all of Skulldozer, with an easy zero grabs. Boomtown has us getting through the first half with ease. Push over the blocks and get yourself over to the rocket car. Later in the level is a ludicrous section where you're required to grab at least 4 bombs to progress, but using our friend the rocket car, we can skip all of it. By lining yourself up in the perfect position, you can grab the rocket car, fly over, and hope that it lands in a good spot, where it will then fly up over the stage, taking you straight to the end with only one grab. Because of the difficulty of this trick, there's also another skip that's a lot easier and uses the collector, but it does use an additional grab. All minecarts and lovers in the mines can be used very easily without grabbing them, and the gate holding the bomb up here can be pushed out with your legs just by walking on top of it. For the timed bomb section, push the bombs with your body and do some strategic jumps and maneuvers to make it through the wheel section. At the end of this minecart ride you're expected to swing off here and land in the minecart, but why would you when you can just jump directly into it? Better yet, why not just abandon the minecart altogether and jump your way to victory? Once you've made it to the wheel section, you can safely drop all the way down and grab the final wheel to make it to the enemies. Run through the final section and complete the level with only one grab. After pushing the lever in Serpent Shrine, we can easily go through the level until reaching this sponge. One way to clear this gap is to use the bouncy platform from earlier, or we can try doing this super high jump to land on top of it, and then jump across. After we grab this unavoidable sponge, it's smooth sailing up until the last snake section. Normally we're meant to grab these sponges so we don't get hit by the snake, but it turns out you can make it all the way to the next checkpoint without stopping. As for the final pit, we can either get a boost from the snake to fly across, or use the slope here to convert our falling speed into horizontal momentum. The boss fight is easy to do without grabbing, and with that, we're out of surf trying with only one grab. Lowrider is easy to do, it's just extremely annoying trying to drive the cars by standing on the levers. But with enough patience, you can make it through by moving every lever with just your body. The entire route through Subway doesn't require any grabbing as the few levers throughout can be stood on to be moved. The construction site is probably the hardest level in the run to do optimally. The only required grabs are for swinging off of one of these three sponges here, then this one that ticks you upwards. The last unavoidable grab being for the boss fight, resulting in a total of three grabs. However, there is a way to skip the first two grabs, using possibly the hardest skip across all of the levels. By timing a jump over this enemy to stand to the left of it, jumping off of the hammer as it swings to then do an LCJ afterwards can get you launched directly to the boss arena. You'll probably never do this in an actual run, but for the sake of the theoretical minimum grabs, we're only going to be counting one grab for this whole level. At first, Endurance Dojo seems like it has a lot of unavoidable grabs because of these swinging lights, but we'll be avoiding them using the one and only skip of this run that uses a second player. We can get a player to jump over this player sensor that activates the collector to stand just in front of him. Then if you spawn a second player by switching your controller number, we can control them to activate the player sensor so that the player on the left can jump as the collector goes past to ride his rocket and land on the structure here. Now get the second player to activate the sensei's dialogue. This will have her lower so that the first player can go over and stand on them. 
Once we're on top, we can wait for the other player to despawn, which will cause the sensei to go back upwards, where we can do a jump up and around onto the wood here. After this, we can do some incredibly precise movement to make our way to the left and to the checkpoint. Thankfully, from this point, it's very straightforward. The only grab we can't avoid is here, so we can be taken upwards. And with all that, we finished Endurance Dojo with only one grab. Sensei's Lost Castle. If you've played this game before, you'll know that this level is infamous for its spinning, grabbable wheels that are required to be used to progress. I'll warn you now, we won't be getting out of this one with a low grab count. The first wall can be easily jumped over without moving the catapult, and here we run into the first set of wheels we can't skip. We are required to grab the first big green wheel, followed by the first, third, and fourth red ones. Some strategic jumps and flings are enough to let us skip a couple of them. After needing to grab another green one, we head into the next red wheel section with a total count of 5 so far. This entire section can actually be done without grabbing. A series of tight jumps at the perfect time is enough to just barely make it up to the top. Once we're out of that platforming nightmare, we're faced with another unavoidable grab, followed by another straight after. In the next section with all the green wheels, it's possible to make it up by only grabbing the second one. Some extremely difficult movement that pushes your jump height to its limits can be used to just barely make it onto these wheels. We can move past the mini bosses with relative ease and head into the final two sections with a current total of 8 grabs. This section with the ninjas might seem like a nightmare at first, but we can do a left corner jump to grab this one immediately, to then fly up to the left and grab the final one, putting our count at a solid 10. As for the final zipline, we're able to make it to the top of these branches here just by doing a bounce jump. After this, we can take a long walk to the scoreboard, and we'll be done with a total of 10 grabs. Unfortunately, the pain isn't over yet. The very next level, Terrible Oni's Volcano, has us piloting around this hot air balloon. And guess how we're supposed to do it? In total, there are three times where we have to fly the balloon. I've been able to complete each section by only grabbing twice, once for horizontal movement, and another to gain height, resulting in a total of 6 grabs for the entire balloon path. The levers inside of the fortresses can be pushed down by carefully landing on top of them, and the boss fight can be done by standing on the lever too. With our grab count for this level at 6, we can safely leave the grab-loving islands and head to the temples. The entirety of the dancer's court is extremely easy without grabbing, however more challenges arise once we reach the next level. Elephant Temple has a couple of these stairs that we're normally meant to pull out, but by moving our body against them in the perfect way, we can just barely nudge them out enough to be able to climb up them. For the next set, we're able to get a lucky bounce off of one of these moving platforms that takes us straight to the top. Then we can do a quick left corner jump to make it past this gap too. The sponge up ahead can be skipped just by timing a jump when the platform is in its down position, and with that the rest of the level is pretty easy to do without crabbing. For Great Magician's Palace, we can make it through the whole first half of the level easily by pushing over this level with our body. After death abusing here, this sponge can be jumped on top of pretty easily. Just watch out for the fireball cycles. Up ahead we find the hardest jump in the level. A super precise bounce jump off of this corner is enough to get us all the way up to this higher platform, where we can drop off while running to make it on top of the moving blocks. With that we can finish all of the temples with zero grabs. The first level of the wilderness, the frozen tundra, doesn't present us with a challenge at all. After we just walk past the dogs, we can finish the entire level without any trouble. The bunker has one section where we'll have to run for our lives to make it out of this obstacle before the cycle changes. Or we can just fling through it like this. But other than that, it's very easy until we reach the dreaded Wheel of Death. The wheel has you grabbing several times to make it through safely, but it turns out that not being able to grab only makes it slightly harder than it usually is. We can finish this level without any grabs at all. The very beginning of the Collector's Lair has us falling down this section by holding the sponge that takes it slow and steady for us. It might be possible just to fall all the way down while being super lucky, but here is a much safer way. We can do a tricky left corner jump off of one of these sponges to get up and out of bounds. Again, thanks to Real for recording this clip. From here we can do a right corner jump to get on top of this hill to land right in front of the locked gate. The next challenge has us doing another right corner jump to get on top of this sponge. But other than that, this level doesn't really present much of a challenge either. There's a couple of times where the game wants us to grab something again to slowly fall down somewhere. But thankfully we can easily just fall straight down and finish the level with no issues and zero grabs. Here we are, the Collector. 
the 26th level and the finale of the run. Only 25 grabs so far. Can we keep the ratio of grabs less than one per level? Let's find out. Wow, this level is actually super easy and it doesn't require grabbing at all. There we have it. How many grabs does it take to complete Little Big Planet? 25. Here are the stats for all of the levels that we played. Kind of surprising how the entire endgame through Temples and the Wilderness has zero all the way through. I encourage anyone who is interested in this challenge to do runs of their own and to try and find even more optimizations to bring the count even lower. Or if you're interested in any of the movement tricks featured today, there'll be a link in the description to a speedrunning guide that explains everything in this video and even more. The LBP speedrunning community isn't too big so we're always looking for new players. Check out the Discord if you're interested. We have runners for every LBP game in the entire series. Link is in the description. And again, big thanks to Real who came out and found a ton of optimizations that drastically improved the count after I created the initial route, as well as all the clips of theirs that I showed. If you like this video, let me know if you want to see more. I'd be happy to branch out and try more things with this game. I might even try doing all the mini games without grabbing too. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.